We're taking a look at the long-awaited and hotly anticipated Valve Steam Deck. This is a handheld gaming console that has basically taken over the internet and it has all kinds of issues with supply chains and things like that. But I'm gonna talk about why I think you might wanna consider this if you're even remotely into emulation, retro gaming, and just a really good solid gaming PC that you can take with you. Let's get into it. So if this is your first time here, I'm John, and I'm a big retro gaming nerd. And at Get Connected, we love finding really cool, interesting tech. Not always the latest and greatest, sometimes the coolest and the weirdest. The big thing that you'll notice about this is that it is big. Uh, if I take a look at a Nintendo Switch, which I happen to have right here, it dwarfs the Switch. And like the Switch, it's very comfortable in your hands, but the Switch was really meant for people of all sizes and all ages, whereas the Steam Deck really seems to be meant for more adult size hands. It's much broader and it's very comfortable to use. And it's fantastic. And in the case itself, it actually has a little hollow out that allows you to store your power adapter, which you're going to need because it does eat the batteries, um, in the case itself without actually worrying about damaging your screen or anything like that. Very clever little trick there. But for me, the big thing about the Steam Deck is I really wanted to see what the emulation situation was for this. I'm not a big AAA gamer on the PC side of things. And I was looking at the Steam Deck as a less expensive option for getting a desktop gaming PC. So with the base model coming in at about 499 Canadian, that's with 64 gigs of eMMC memory, or the mid-tier model, which is what this one is, which comes with 256 of SSD built in. I would actually recommend you get the lower tier one because you can actually replace that yourself. It's not too hard to take it apart. So it just really depends what you're planning to do. If you're trying to put a lot of games on it, and some of these games, especially the AAA titles, can be very large. I put Elden Ring on here and it was 50 gigs out of the gate and that's just for one game. The, the thing for me is that at about 650 Canadian for the mid-tier one, which is the one that I've pre-ordered, uh, that's about half the price of uh, a decent gaming PC. And you know, this is something you can take with you, like the Switch, it's very portable. You can also plug it into your TV. Uh, it's got an, a USB-C port on the top that allows you to plug in a dongle for HDMI out, as well as charging and everything else. But I really wanted to see how this thing works with emulators. And I thought it was gonna be a tedious process of installing an emulator, going to have to do all the ROMs separately and everything like that. Well, fortunately, and Again, the more people that get this device, the better this is going to get because people are voraciously uh, installing things and trying to find better ways of doing it. There's something called Emudeck, in which emudeck.com, you go there, you download a little file that you run on the desktop mode of this, and it actually does all the work for you. It will go in and install all the emulators. It will create the subfolders you need for everything. All you have to do is supply your own ROMs, which Unfortunately, we can't help you with, but Google is your friend, and the Internet Archive has tons of games on there that you can download for free. And this allows you to create a really rich and interesting version of an emulator. You can even run Emulation Station, which is something that I use all the time on my Odroid Go and other little handheld devices that I have. This does it so well. It makes it very easy, and it'll even go out and grab all of the you know, artwork and all that other stuff you need for those things to make it look pretty and perfect. Now, I ran it, uh, Emu Deck, and I didn't read the instructions, I didn't do anything, and I did have some problems. One of the things you have to do when you run it is turn off Steam when you're in the desktop mode. If you don't do that, you're gonna have some problems, and some of my stuff didn't work. I'd reboot and everything I had done was gone, Fortunately, there's been an update to Emu Deck, and also I was able to turn off Steam to do the install, and everything is just great now. It actually will create categories of all your consoles in the library system, so you actually have like these little shortcuts to specific emulators or specific consoles that you wanna run, and it's very painless to do. The only thing you do have to do that's a little bit tedious is go in and copy all your ROMs. Unfortunately, the SD card slot that you would use to host your ROMs is in a Linux format. So you can't just populate it on your PC or your Mac, pop it in there and you're good to go. You actually have to plug in something to the Steam Deck and then copy it using the file manager on the Steam Deck to the appropriate folder that Emu Deck has set up for you. It's not 
that big of a deal. You can copy and paste very easily. I found actually it wasn't too bad to use the Steam Deck's controls to do that with the mouse and keyboard kind of support with the touchpad and the buttons. The nice thing about this particular process, you only have to do it once. Once you've done it, it's done for good. And then you can just enjoy the console. Now let's talk about the Steam Deck itself. Back in the day, I used to build my own PCs and I loved it. And then I bought a Mac and I stopped building my own PC. And I know a lot of people still love doing that and that's their jam. It's not my jam, but we've never had a console like the Steam Deck that allows you to customize everything about it. And what I mean by that is Steam Deck has basically made all the parts available for replacing damaged parts, broken parts, and presumably third parties will at some point create their own so that you can actually swap out almost every part of the Steam Deck itself. So if you break the screen, you can go buy a new one and they have a really interesting guide on how to replace the screen. It tells you the level of difficulty, all that type of stuff. So this entire console can be broken down into separate parts and then rebuilt. I wouldn't say easily because some of it is kind of involved. Um, not unlike what I did with my, my Switch to actually replace and reskin the Joy-Cons in the back, but it's not, not out of the realm of possibility and I'm sure there'll be lots of services that will allow you to do this. What's exciting is that this basically turns this into a very modular console, not unlike a desktop PC where you can pick and choose the parts you want. I mean, we're at the very early days and people are just starting to get these consoles now, but I think in the very near future, the third party market for Steam Deck parts will be great, maybe upgrades even, uh, lots of mods certainly, and there's lots of great skins and cases and stuff like that I've seen online for them. But it is uh, a phenomenal console and I'm just really excited to see what Valve and, and the community in general does with this particular console because there's so much p potential with it, especially because it's an, a Linux-based console, you can install Windows on it, and everything is just getting better and better. Valve keeps releasing software up or firmware updates for it that improve the functionality, improve the battery life, maybe makes the fan a little quieter, does a bunch of other things like that. And having all this sort of modularness, customizability, and basically the, a, a PC to do what you want with that you can carry around in a very comfortable form factor is pretty fantastic. So go out there and get your pre-order if you haven't got it in because it might not be until next year before you can actually get one, unfortunately, because they're not gonna be in stores anytime soon. So if the Steam Deck is just maybe a little bit out of your price range for, for uh, emulation and just gaming in general, take a look at the Odroid Go Super. This is a fantastic little system on a chip computer it's got a great screen, very compact, actually almost fits inside the Steam Deck, it's so small. And it's a fantastic uh, emulation platform for all your emulators. Definitely the 80s, early 90s, uh, anything newer, you're gonna get, gonna get a little bit of problem, but otherwise it's a fantastic thing. And we actually have a video about it as well.